new video here with another pump. Hopefully it stays working. Now we got the sun getting ready to go down. So, <laughs> as always, huh? Spent a long time, like two hours or something, messing with that other pump. Uh, almost had it. And then it quit just as I would get the compressor started. So let's have some better luck with this one. Definitely moving a bit of water here. So, yeah. They are now equalizing about 80 degrees for the water. So water's already up to 80. Sun's going down. I'm not gonna dump out the water and refill it to get it down to 70. Ignore superheat and subcooling. We're checking water in and out on the probes, not refrigerant. And we got 70 degrees, pretty much 71 for the air coming out. It's a supply fan. That's a local run. Compressor's running. Water pump, you better stay on. I'm gonna wind up throwing something across the street. There we go. Oh, there we go. Ha! <laughs> it's always something. Alright, get a little picture in picture going on. See how this works this time. Using the Samsung built in screen capture. So we got 214 on the high side. It's definitely not shooting up. Get out of my way there. Brand new phone, like I mentioned in the last video, this is a brand new Samsung Note 10. The Note 9 just pissed me off. Probably would have gotten better with a reset, but I said screw it, I might as well get a new one. My daughter's going to inherit another phone. <laughs> so, and her screen was getting smashed, so she's going to go from the S8 Plus to the Note 9. So hopefully this one is working okay. Forgot to change the... Uh, Sony camera to MPEG, it's still on that whatever Sony format or whatever not. Alright, so while water temperatures 92 in, 98 out, that water temperature that proves the water flow is hauling ass. Pressure's only 240 something. Very good still for uh, R22, so 8.8 .8 amps for the compressor and the fan. Let's go ahead and kick this up to ah, 70 hertz. Oh, and I hit the wrong button. There we go. Enter. 70 hertz. That bumped it up to 10.3 amps for the blower and compressor. High size up to 270. We got our water up to uh, 108 leaving, 70, or 103 coming in. We're heating the water real fast. You know what? Let's go back down to 60. I don't need to overrun this. We're just trying to see how well it heats up the water and what the pressure's gonna go. I did shoot that head pressure up now though, 280. But you know what, the water coming in is already 106. Went from 80 to uh, 106 plus. Some lag probably on the temperature readings, so we're probably almost up to 110 already. So we heated this water up in like no time. 290, seems like a bit for our, ooh that's hot. Uh, for our R22, but again, given compared to what I've been running on this thing, I've been shooting up really close to 400 by the time I get this water over 110. You can see right here, it's already shooting way up past 111, 115 going out. Just crossing the 300 PSI mark. Yeah. So let's say, let's fiddle around. Say I wanted to uh, try to keep this from oh, under 300 PSI. It's still a little over 300. I think right now the limits aren't letting me go below 50 hertz. So that's probably about the lowest I could go right now. Water temperatures, 115, 118 leaving. Getting a little less temperature split there. Water temperature's way up there. Still got 58 degree leaving air, so it's not a 20 degree split, because what was a little lower, about 71 before. But with the TXV, it could be extra throttle. Oh, remember, the other thing to do is I need to adjust, I haven't adjusted the charge, so um, in another phase of this adventure, I need a bigger water container to get it kind of, you know, stabilized in pressures and then adjust the refrigerant, pull some out, put some in, kind of find out, you know, when it's a, get it just to a fully flooded evaporator, call it good. 332, um, 82, let's see what happens if I go back up to 60 hertz with this thing, how high that head pressure goes. 
We're already to the shutoff point though. All I'm trying to do is get up to the 120s, 130 max. With the lag of the probes, the water's probably at 130 right now. And we're not, we're just getting up to 350 PSI. That's, that's not that bad. When, uh, again, I need to put a probe on the hot gas line six inches from the compressor one of these days and see how hot that's getting. And we're at our target temperature already. And I'm not even close to 400. I don't think this is going to go any slower. Oh, yeah, it is. I forgot to reprogram that VFD there. Water temperature is over 130 now. <laughs> that 20 hertz on the compressor. Yeah, so 130 degree water. We already passed it. That water is probably more like 135. It's You can't even hold your hand in there for a fraction of a second. It's so hot. So, I don't know. At least you see how fast I heated up five gallons of water. Uh, being that the sun hasn't gone down and nothing's broke, I might just uh, dump that water out, do one more take. Okay, let's try this again. The sun's really going down now. All right, so I did dump the water. Got water right out of the hose again. So it's back down to 71 degrees. Air temperature is about 70-ish. One other thing I grabbed real quick was this probe, about 80 degrees on the discharge. I'm going to watch the discharge line at the same time this time. Put this sucker on. You guys ready? Amps. Of course, you don't get the inrush current. It's slowly going up, like seven and a half amps for the blower and compressor. We're at 60 hertz. 200, see it's got good water flow, good gallons per minute. I'm sure this pump's similar to the other one. I didn't test it, don't have time to test it. So we'll just go with the gallons per minute that I calculated in the last video. But you can see that it is moving water so much that it's, you know, it's going. So, sucking the water off the bottom, which would be the cold, hot returns going on the top. And hopefully that works out for us. 7.7 amps for combined. You could just look, whoops. Um, 60 hertz, 5.8 amps, 233 volts. That's what this thing's doing. 216 on the high side, 75 suction, 56 degree supply air. We got uh, water is 87 already from 70. So, I mean, before I could even look at a few things and walk back over to this uh, it's came up to almost 90 degrees it is hitting 90 degrees right now so I'm heating that five gallons of water up in no time so I just raised that water 20 degrees within like a minute maybe so once I get this kind of working I will put a bigger uh, container to run this thing a little longer because it's just heating so stinking fast I guess I should just leave it on 60 Hertz for right now 144 degree discharge line that's at uh, about 10 inches away. I don't think it, the gas is going to change that much drop just going around that turn, you know, where I have the clamp on there. So it's pretty accurate. I'm going to try to, we're trying to stay under 225, 220-ish or so. So it's not even 150 yet. That will probably shoot up though. Um, supply air is at 55 now. So we've got like a 15 degree split. Remember, there's no duct work on here or nothing. It's just... I don't know what the CFM is. But remember, this unit is a three-ton uh, evaporator coil, three-ton expansion valve, but it doesn't seem to be adjusting properly. It's got two-ton compressor on it because I dropped, removed the three-ton and put the two-ton in there. Hoping for the smaller capacity with the uh, larger heat exchanger could give me some good. So. Water's up to 103 and we are shooting up to about 270 on the high side. Discharge. 156. Gas line. We're not even sweating it. I usually read it. You know, 180 is a pretty common temperature uh, for discharge gas temperature. So, yeah, we're not cooking oil or anything like that. We'll take another look at that once this gets well over 300. We're shooting up to 290 right now. Now, remember an old you know, sear, eight sear unit or something 
on a hot day, they hit 300 PSI here in Arizona. Believe me, I mean, as soon as a little bit of air restriction or whatever, you know, they were shooting 310, you know. So, it ain't like compressors haven't ran at 300 PSI all summer long here. Now we're at 302 with the uh, water being over 112. It's only got a couple degree temperature rise. You notice that now? Before, when I was running that shitey pump at 1.2 gallons per minute or whatever it was, um, I was getting like a 20 to 30 gallon temperature rise across that heat exchanger in and out. It's because it was not moving enough water. So, shooting up, losing a degree or so, two already on my rapid air. So, I do notice when the head pressure starts spiking, that this happens. Now we're shooting 168 degrees for the hot gas line, so I guess I'm not gonna sweat it. I'm just gonna let this thing kinda go. 320, 326, yep. Starting to get up there. We are now at 9.5 amps for everything. Which is still half of what one heating element pulls. 335, 121 degrees in the bucket, 124 leaving. So it should be a couple degrees hotter than that, given the lag of the probes and the copper. And yeah, can't even hold your hand in there for any time. Really hot right there where it's circling. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so uh, 125, 128 leaving. 352 on the uh, discharge. 176, see we're not even 180 on the discharge, so. We're probably fine. Next time, maybe I'll put the probe down there really close to the compressor, but you do lose temperature pretty quick, you know, when it, when they're getting up to 300 at the, at the valves. But I wouldn't sweat it. 179, 366. So we're already past, we're already past, all right, what the, uh, we'd ever be heating the water. See, it says 130 uh, in and 135 out. We watch, it's gonna keep climbing probably for a second. And we reach 367 on the compressor uh, discharge pressure. And we got up to 180 or so on the gas line. Right there. Oops. Right there on this clamped on the fluke is clamped on, and it was fluked read fast, faster than those ones do, so. Yeah, 132. So that water, we already went, hit the, uh, we achieved um, maximum temperature for the heater at that point. So I would think that uh, probably a successful test there. We didn't even eclipse 10 amps, I believe, on that, uh, on the system. 10 amps, we heated five gallons of water from 70 up to over 130 in no time. 133. So, I don't know, I think that worked. Time to button this up. Before the sun goes down. Wish I would have remembered I had that pump. Water temperature is still 133 degrees. Pumping the water is actually probably losing temperature at this point. Plus it's aerating a little bit right there. Freaking good and hot. So, all right, so uh, I would have to say that Right now in its configuration, kind of good to go to uh, get a, a bigger container so I could get a little more time and testing and uh, experiment on the next time with once I get up to a, you know, closer to the uh, cutoff point, maybe start backing the compressor off just a little bit. In with that, looks like the sun is now behind all the hills. So that means I have just matter of minutes to put this away. So, all right, that'll conclude it. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. The bastardization of water source heat pump, water heater. Yeah.